Hey, it's Marianne. Welcome to another episode of the Influential Nonprofit. If you don't know me, well, you know me now and we're best friends. Uh, I work with nonprofit leaders to master the art of influence. Why is it important to be the most influential person you can be? Because there's no problem that can't be resol resolved, no relationship that can't be made better by you becoming a more influential leader. And by influence, I mean getting people to choose to do what you want them to do, not do it because they must do it or they have to do it because they are choosing to do it. They're choosing to come to that board meeting. They're choosing to give you money because they're excited to do it. They get to do it. It's that energy of choice that allows you to mobilize people, create communities of support, and you move your mission no matter the external circumstance. That's something that interests you. Um, I will, um, I'll let you know that there's a link in the in the show notes that you can book a call with me and I can help you grow your influence right away. I'm also creating this assessment. I'm almost done. I'm very excited about it. And then people can take this assessment and get a little score and then we can, we can debrief that. That's not ready yet. Teasing it. Okay. But what I do want to talk about today is as an influential leader, um, one of the things that, one of the qualities of an influential leader is the idea of, of, of understanding that there could be new ways of doing things and new ways of looking at things. And I want to challenge your way of looking at fundraising goals. We're all setting goals right now. It's 2024 and it's 2023 and 2024. We're all setting goals, right? I get it. I am too. I did a workshop last week. I spent the whole day planning for 2024. I'm working with my clients on the same thing. What, what do we want 2024 to look like? And we often set goals to do that. And I'm going to share with you seven reasons why setting fundraising goals sucks and it's actually hurting your ability to raise money instead of helping it. And thankfully, I'm going to tell you what to do instead. Yay. Isn't that better? <laughs> okay. Yay. So let's get this party started. Number one, when we create fundraising goals based on amount, we are measuring by amount only. And we're losing other ways to keep score of our relationship. So we're only playing one game, right? And that game is how much. And when we keep score by only one way, we lose so many important ways of not just creating donors, but believers, right? Loyal people who are part of a community of support that they feel included in. Because maybe they didn't give that much but they give every year or they've given every 20 years or they give every month or they don't give a lot, but they bring a lot of people forward. Those, those people often don't get to, um, well, those people don't get the plaque, you know, on the wall. They don't get to be on the, on the fancy thing. Cause they, it's not about how much. So when we only look at how much we tend to not look at the other ways that people are forming, donors are forming relationships. They're stepping up and they're saying, hey, I'm a believer, right? That's that's more than being a donor. And if you want to go listen to Becky Endicott, my, and my two partner with Becky Endicott, who she talks a lot about believers. And I love that and I'm using it because I think it's important. So we're only measuring one way of how we build relationships and we're neglecting the other ways that are just as important in the end to creating revenue. And listen, let me just step back for a second and say this. I know you have money to raise and that money is important and critical to a mission. And if you don't raise that money, people will be hurting or animals will be hurting or our environment will be hurting. I get it. That's why I think this is important because I want to help you find a better way of doing this that has more grace and flow and ease to it, less stress, and has way more opportunity than you could ever imagine. Than this old way that I feel like is a bit outdated for setting goals that, that worked for a time, but it's a different time. It's a different time, Okay. All right, number one, remember, measuring by amount only limits how we look at a relationship. Number two, measuring by amount makes fundraising transactional. And what do I mean by transactional? Well, we talk about well, donors aren't ATMs. We talk about that. What do we mean? We mean, oh, well, we're putting the money before the relationship. We're treating donors like we only care about them for money. And I know, and you know, and, and we all know that's not true. And that's not what's in our hearts. But that's what we're valuing is the transaction is how much we get from them. 
That's how we're measuring success. And in that transaction, we can often sacrifice the relationship for a short-term goal gain. Let me give you an example. I was doing a workshop open in Maryland last at the beginning of this year, and I was sharing, um, you know, how to get to yes. I've done that workshop many times, and and one of the things is, you know, like like release the outcome, honor the no, and. Uh, a woman in my workshop, she said, I was talking with the donor and the donor said, hey, not this year. And she said, hey, no problem. I'll Let's talk next year. And then the development person came back to the boss and said to the boss, um, he's not in for this year. And the boss says, well, you couldn't just go get something from him. And she said, so I get you. I get what you're saying, Marianne. I believe it. That's how I treat my donors. But that's not how my superiors see it. They want me to go back and get something. So let's say she goes back and says, hey, I know you weren't for 5,000 this year, but maybe could you do 1,000? And he, and the donor says, yeah, sure. But now the donor's mad because he told you this wasn't a good year. He told you wait for next year. And then you, then you come back. And so you may get 1,000, but how do you think that conversation is going to go next year? Right? So you're sacrificing the relationship for a short-term gain. Or you're valuing your sense of your sense of urgency becomes more important than a donor needs because oh my gosh it's almost December thirty first and I need to make this goal and da 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 when heck if I'm writing a check my money's good on the thirty first as it is on January first and your need to make a goal is not my issue I, my money I'm gonna give my money when I'm ready to give my money the biggest thing that I wish if there's something I wish. I could instill in every board member or executive director, development director, you don't get to say who or when. You want to be able to say, I can get somebody to do something, but you do not get to say who and you don't get to say when. That is the universe's job. They will, they will, they will deliver when they are ready. Now, sure, you can prompt them and encourage them. But if you're pushing them, people will push back. And oftentimes we get pushy because we feel pressure to meet these goals and we sacrifice the relationship to make this goal. We make it transactional, not transformational. And that builds resentment. So you could win in the short term, but maybe not in the long term. Okay, number three. We tend to not value other things that come to us if they're not supportive of a goal that we need, right? So not just in keeping score, but in just the things that come to us, right? maybe a smaller gift or, you know, hey, maybe it's a, a you got a sponsorship for an event, but, but um, that wasn't really something you were focused on. Like, and so we're not honoring or valuing those things because they're not in support of a goal. And so we miss out on a lot of joy and love that's coming to us because we're not seeing it because it's not in support of a goal. I mean, I, I, I felt this, okay? You know, and I do this class, Up Level Your Influence. I do this course. It's completely transformational and wonderful. And I had, I didn't make a goal this year. Like I didn't have people enroll um, in the fall session, as many people as I wanted. And I felt like, oh my gosh, am I not good at what I do? Or da -da -da, what's wrong? Da -da -da. Um, um, because I wasn't valuing the other gifts, the other the other things that that are all around me because I was only measuring my joy from if people enrolled in this course. I wasn't measuring my joy from how many people that I get emails from every week telling me they love what I do or how many people listen to this podcast. I was only measuring my joy in one way. So I was missing and I had to open myself up to all the beauty around me instead of focusing on the one thing I didn't have. And that's what goals can do. Okay. Number four, let me, let me, let me restate one through three. We don't, we measure, we, um, when we measure by amount only, we limit how we, how we um, track a relationship. Number two, um, fundraising can be transactional. Oh, and I didn't mention this, but it can also be like unethical. I mean, it can push us to do some, I'm not saying that's how I'm just saying, you know, um, three, and we don't value the other things that are coming to us that aren't in support of that specific goal that we had in mind. 
Okay, number four, goals do not create long-term success. And I'm pretty sure you want long-term success. Goals don't do that. What? So let's look at a goal, like a race. Or if you're me, I'm going to look at it like a show. I'm going to put on a show. So what do I do? I rehearse and I rehearse and I rehearse and I practice and I sell the tickets and I put on a show. And then it's over because it was only in support of that goal. All activity after that stops. Let's say you're running, you're training for the marathon. You train, 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 you run. Boom. Let All right. So let's say you have an event and it's in October and uh, you need sponsorship. So, oh, you know, about, oh, March, I should be really working on that. April, okay, may I better kick it into gear because this thing's in October. You know, I need to have people in line by September, blah, blah, blah. You get it. So that's when you start the activity and then you have the, you line up your sponsors, you have the event and bam, they don't hear from you for six months because you're not in sponsorship mode. So it's a yo-yo effect of energy, and act. And what we want is like consistency. And we're going to talk about, you know, what we want instead of goals. But let me hint, it's consistency in that relationship building. So by the time six months before the event rolls around, you're already in touch with people. You've already got it together. It because you're you're in constant, you're in constant communication with these sponsors. It's not just it's not just sponsor time. I have a relationship that I connect with every, you know every so often during the year. So when it comes time for sponsorships, um, um, I, you know, when it comes time for sponsorships, it's, it's a done deal, right? It's a phone call. My, my BFF in the whole world, Jim, and I talk about him all the time, um, was a brilliant fundraiser for many, many years. And, um, you know, he, he fundraised for, for a school, for a high school. And um, he would put on alumni events all over the country and da, da, da. And people would say, Jim, this is lovely. Oh, this is so lovely. What can I do? And he'd say, remember me at annual, remember me at annual appeal. Remember us at annual appeal, you know? And so by the time the annual appeal came around, he, the money was flowing in because he was consistently in connection with people all year long. It wasn't like, oh, I better start calling people. Again, that goes up to number two transactional, right? Okay, number number five, goals can restrict our joy. If I am looking at a goal that will tell me if I am good at my job, you know, you know, and or your leadership is looking at your ability to make this money as how important you are, it can it can restrict your joy and your success, right? Um, because I'm looking for, if, if I get this money, then I'll feel good. If I get this money, then I'll be a good fundraiser. If I get this money, then I'll be a good leader. When you are a good fundraiser, you are a good leader, no matter what the outcome. And this is something I work on in my program, in myself, in my clients all the time, is staying sovereign, no matter the outcome. When I didn't get a good enrollment for my fall course, I I am sovereign of what I do has value, Right. I am, a, it's not about the outcome. It's about staying sovereign. And what I mean of staying sovereign is staying on course, not falling off the throne. Keep moving, keep doing what you're doing. Again, consistency and action. You know, instead of, oh, they said, no, I must be awful. It's a joy stealer. Goals can be a joy stealer, okay? Number six. Goals focus on results, getting results, but not really the underlying systems or problems that are getting in the way of those results. Goals focus on the result without so much as like, well, how are we going to do it? What, what's going to happen? And again, when we only focus on the results, right? we're often moving in direction of that result and, and for a temporary amount of time until we meet the results. But the problem, the underlying problem doesn't change. So let me go back to the sponsorship. I had a client meeting the other day and they said, Marianne, you know, these sponsorship, that's a nut I can't crack. 
And one of the things that we talked about is building consistency over time in relationships with potential or current sponsors. So it's not just like sponsor season. It's about the systems and structures underneath that are important. Because once we understand the value of systems and structures, the goals are going to happen. The goals are going to come. So they don't focus on the result or, or the goals focus only on the result, not the underlying issue or problem or the structures or systems that can be put in place to solve that problem. Number seven. Goals automatically create tension and resentment from the beginning. As a development person or executive director, you know, um, you may want to let me lower this down so I can make the goal. And the board's like, hey, let's raise it up. Or they're like, well, sure, you can double the amount in six months, can't you? And you're like, whoa, what? Are you kidding me? How am I supposed to do that? They, you know, they think you can sprinkle your magical fairy development dust over things and just make money appear. Wait, whoa, hold on. So now there's tension because you want them small so you can be successful. They want them big. So we're already creating tension. And overall, goals goals create smallness because we want to stay safe and we want to create something that we can actually achieve rather than the big, hairy, audacious goal or the stretch goal, which is like, oh, let's see if we can. And if we can't, what did we learn along the way? That's a much different approach. And you better meet this goal. You better bring in that 2 million, Missy, you know, or I, I can't remember who I was in conversation with, but they, they were saying, yeah, they just decided to like double the amount. You're like, whoa, what? It's the goals can set you up for failure. They can make you play small. They can make you, they can make us, they can make us be very, um, you know, I guess I want to say conservative in, in, in how we want to play the game because we're afraid if we don't meet them, it'll look bad on us. The big, hairy, audacious goal or a stretch goal or something like that, we're like, hey, let's just see what we can do. And if we make it great, and if not, what did we what did we learn along the way? Now, I know sometimes goals can be like a big, hairy, audacious goal can be motivating. Let's see if we can't double it. And okay, what if if we wanted to double it, what would we have to do? Let's have that conversation. Is that even possible? What would that look like? Why don't we try? And then in that, then the lessons learned, but it's about the lessons learned and trying instead of actually making the goal. And this the the it it takes the the punitive relationship off the number and just says, hey, let's just let's see what happens. Let's stretch and see what could we do. All right, so what do we do instead of goals? For me, and this is what I feel like makes me successful, makes the clients I work with successful, makes the organizations that I that I work with successful is systems and structures. Now, I'm gonna tell you, I this is very interesting for me because I am a make it up as I go girl. <laughs> I live in the moment. I'm very intuitive, you know, and I am, I also am very, very good at creating systems and structures that support me and my work so that I can stay in the moment, so I can stay in my zone of genius. But the systems and structures are going to be the things that are actually going to help us achieve whatever results we want. It's not the goal that's going to achieve it for us. It's the system and structures that we put in place to support the goals. So when you're looking at what are the results that we want for 2024, what you want to look like is what are the systems and structures that we can put in place to help create those goals? So let's say, and I'm just going to make these numbers up, you know, for this for ease of this conversation, okay? I wanna I wanna raise ten thousand dollars a month, right? Or let's say, just let's just say it like that. I wanna raise ten thousand dollars a month, and so I know I have a thirty percent conversion rate. So let's say I may send ten meetings, and of those ten meetings, maybe thirty, you know, three of those people would say yes to a gift. So that means if I want to, and, and let's say, you know, their average gift is $1,000. Again, making this up. 
So I know that if I need to talk to 30 people to get 10 people to say yes, to raise that $10,000, how in the world am I going to talk to 30 people? So that's where the systems and structures come into place. So is that, you know, is that you're calling people every day, you're inviting people into a conversation. Um, you know, you, you can also look at maybe the things that you could do to up your close, you know, to up your connection rate and your close rate. But now I have to get in front of 30 people. How am I going to do that? What systems can I put in place to connect with people? Are those lunch and learns? Are, you know what I mean? Are, um, um, are those, you know, whatever it is, it's about the systems and the structures that are going to put you in front of 30 people a month instead of talking with maybe two or three people a month and then really freaking out the second half of the year and having to like talk to 20. <laughs> so when I set up the systems that put me in front of people or whatever I need to make that goal, again, like the sponsorship, instead of like, oh, it's, uh, it, you know, it's April time to talk to sponsors. I'm doing sponsor touches every month, right? I'm doing something to reach out to my sponsors every month. I'm sending them a little thing. I'm doing a little thing for them. Maybe I'm swinging by if they have a storefront that I can visit. Just saying, hey, dropping something off, you know, that kind of thing. Those are touches. And then, so now, now you're con conversing all year long. So when it comes time for that event, hey, you want to be a sponsor again, you don't have to ramp up a bunch of activity. It's basically like distilling all this activity and dividing it up over 12 months instead of pocketing it into small parts. So if I'm delivering my emails consistently, right? And and then and, and I deliver my email and I'm looking at who who's opening them every week, inviting those people into a conversation. If I'm putting on lunch and learns, inviting those people. So what things can I do to create the 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 connections that I want to make and the meetings that I'd love to have consistently. When I set that in place, the goals are going to happen, right? And that's why key performance indicators are so important. When you have your KPIs of how many, how much, it's the daily activity that makes us successful. It's it's not like the, it's not the, you know, it's not the push out, you know, like it, it's, it's the daily consistent activity that in the end will make us successful. One of my coaches, I got to find the paper because I have it here. He talks about um, each month doing some two sort of showcases, a lunch and learn, um, a, you know, maybe a, a, some kind of speaking engagement, something where you're in front of people. Um, where you're going you know, to connecting with people, either audiences you already have or new ones, um, you know, having connection conversations uh, or or um, there's three kinds of conversations you can have connection conversations, consideration conversations and closing conversations, depending on how many you want to have a month. Right. Let's like let's say for the purposes of my need, I'm eight. If I have eight of those a month. Um, and, and maybe I'm going to plant, you know, 90 seeds, which means every day I'm going to call three donors a month, or I'm going to reach out to 90 people somehow, social media, whatever. When I look at things like that, now I have the systems in place to create the mechanism to drive the people to me that I need to make the goals that I want to make. I'm going to say, create the results that I want. Yeah. And which is going to make it a lot easier. Also, remove the ick factor completely. Okay. So I'm not putting relationships. I'm not putting money before the relationship, right? I'm not having to hustle and get people to do stuff that it's not making anybody feel good, but I got to get this goal met. You know, I'm willing to push and stretch a little bit and try new things because me meeting or not meeting a goal is not going to look bad on me. I'm willing to find joy in every person I encounter and every relationship that I create, whether or not it turns into a, a donation. And I'm setting up for long-term success because I'm building these systems. 
And I'm working on the same thing right now. Like I am in the middle of, of working on, okay, how can I build better systems in my life so that it just, it's just flowing for me? Because once I have those systems in place, then that then that's working. And that now I have structure, which actually allows me to be more spontaneous in, in the moment because those things are going to be working all the time. Right. And so when I have those systems, like, okay, I, I deliver content every single week. Do you know how I do that? I have a really great system <laughs> that, that only allows me to spend about a couple hours a week delivering content and generate a lot of attention. I, I, and I've taught, it's called the content hourglass. I have a podcast for it. So the systems and the consistency is what is going to make you achieve the results you want, not the goals. The goals do not create outcomes. Consistency, structure, systems create outcomes. And, and measuring those little tiny steps, measuring the growth of your email list or, you know, your, um, come on, now I know, I know there's campaign season, right? Like one of my clients just finished an annual appeal and they had goals for that, that they wanted to, to make this much money, okay? And then we can also look at, in addition to that, how many new people did they did they bring did they bring on? How many people came back? How many people um, that donated um, recommended or brought other people along with them? We're looking at it more comprehensively than we did before, and I know this is an appeal, so there's only going to be a certain time, right? And also loving your donors all year long means when that annual appeal comes, just like my friend Jim, they're ready. They're excited. They feel valued and connected all year long. They're ready to give. So that's just another way of looking at why goal setting sucks and measure your outcomes by what results do you want to create and what systems structures do you want to put in place to achieve those results? Um, all right. I hope this opened your mind a little bit. It certainly did to me. I feel like sometimes I create on this podcast the lessons I want to learn myself the most, um, and I'm happy to um, explore that right alongside you. I don't have all the answers. Um, I, you know, part of the work of, of influence is turning the mirror on yourself and saying, okay, what is this teaching me? What is this showing me? Anything, everything around me is a lesson. If I'm willing to turn the lens or turn the mirror to myself and say, what is this teaching me? What is this showing me? What is this calling me into, into my life? And standing up for a different way of looking at results and standing up for more aligned, authentic relationships with your donors that go deeper than just how much money will only benefit you and your organization in the end. Alrighty, my friend. Hey, listen, if you're interested in growing your influence and becoming the most influential leader you can be, easily enrolling people in a vision, getting them to not just do what you want, but choose to do it, to be excited to do it, I'm your girl. There is a link in the show notes feel free to book a call with me. Um, hopefully I'm going to have this assessment done in the next few weeks, but until then, just feel, feel free to book a call with me and we can talk about where you're at, where you want to go. And if I can help you get there, I will. Um, I definitely will give you some tips and uh, actionable items in that conversation. And if we can talk about what it looks like to work with me, if I think you're a fit or if you're interested, we can talk about that. And if not, that's totally okay too. I really, truly enjoy meeting new people and connecting with them and giving them you know, even just a little bit of love, inspiration, and guidance. It fills my cup either way. All right. Have a uh, have a great rest of your day. And uh, we'll see you next time on the Influential Nonprofit.